Okay, welcome everyone to the Down the Rabbit Hole podcast featuring Gwen the Recovering Witch and me, Omar, where we go into the, we take a big jump into the rabbit hole that is this really cosmic, weird time we're living in, don't you think? And I, I think that even, agree. it's just crazy. I think it's wild. I think that what a cool time to even have these conversations. And I think that the reason why we're having this podcast is to record our experiences as if we are living through the eyes of Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, and I I like how this transpired between you and I. And for those that are watching or listening, um, Omar, he reads natal chart. And I had never had mine read. And we started talking and we just had like, it seemed like that instant chemistry and he talked about a podcast. And the more we kept talking, he's like, okay, let's, we're, we've gone down another rabbit hole. And rabbit holes have seemed to always like <laughs> been the theme. And, um, mm -hmm. My husband actually, like one time, he even gifted like the treadmill with like a carrot and um, <laughs> on an anniversary and with the book of Alice in Wonderland. And so lately with like in the last several weeks or days actually, like it, that's been the theme is somebody saying you've gone down the rabbit hole. So like, why not like further explore the rabbit hole? So yeah. And you know and, what, like uh, even, after that natal chart reading, I I honestly thought that we were going to talk and then that was going to be it. And I was like, okay, I feel like we have something to do together. It's something important or something, we just have to work together. And I just felt like this pull of like, I don't know who you are, but like, I like you. And I often don't find people I like instantaneously. So I like, and at the same time, like, to be honest, even in those series of conversations, we went through so many like holes and mazes and like some far out there like <laughs> conversations that you don't necessarily have with your friends. You're like, okay, well, I never talked about I never talked about that with anyone. And you're I felt you felt the same. You're like, wow, I guess that maybe perhaps we're each each other's guide in a way where I mean, I never felt like I had a friend like you where I felt like, yes, I resonate with that. Yes, very that. Yeah. And that makes sense to me because often enough, I find that if I talk to others about these sort of magical experiences or even like reflective moments where I'm like, wow, like, and yet I'm human and I'm seeing this stuff. Yeah, well, and I think like, for us being like human like there's still like some of that spiritual or I, I I'm kind of deeming it almost like supernatural and like the whole time that you and I've been talking like when we find like our people and that chemistry is right and maybe people can relate to the like I feel like I know you the it seems so easy to talk to you. Like you really get me, you understand me. And I referenced like the umbrella club where I feel like there's so many of us where we're making this connection. And, but like, it seems so far out of reach. So when it happens, we get so excited and like, it's almost like we feel like the universe or sky people, whatever you want to call it, like they send messages <laughs> and say, you know like hey these are the people that we've been trying to get to you or at some point we aligned it for you and you've hit like a stepping stone in your life and so Omar had sent me a text today and he was saying I went and took a walk and like I had mentioned like Mary Poppins to him <laughs> about like him showing up into her room <laughs> and with his little Mary Poppins bag and like he doesn't even pull anything out of magical bag but he's like I'm here 
you've observed me, this is it. I don't need to do anything else. Like, and now I can leave, you know? And then you had the conversation with your friend and I won't get into details, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yes. I think that's the next, like, <laughs> I just feel like it's been very like, since the moment that we like, talk I mean I think the first conversation we had was like this is so expansive I feel expansive with you and then I think that even I mean, even then when we were complete strangers but we also feel like this gravitational pull of familiarity and resonance and what I think is also very special is that that expansive energy sort of like carry itself over into my everyday life Mm -hmm. Or even things that you had said was like, okay, I feel like I have the attention of the sky people and I'm listening. And I'm also like realizing that, okay, this wasn't just any meeting. Yeah. And perhaps I was supposed to meet this person because the, I'm not necessarily a person that doesn't pay attention to the signs, but I've been seeing them intently little by little. And I'm like, huh funny haha ha. okay should I go this way should I go that way what direction and then I just find myself even getting comfortable talking out loud to my guys where I feel like before not necessarily like before we had a conversation but perhaps pre before the the decade even started I was like I can't talk out loud to people that I that are invisible like that sounds kind of absurd don't you think and I think, lo and behold, after we talked, like, my guys were just like, yeah, no, we know. She was talking to us. She, she has her guides, too. Mm -hmm. Like, she's been on the, that path for some time. And it's like, when you meet someone else, it's like, I guess, maybe in the same maze that you're in, it becomes like, wait, you, you saw that, too? Okay, great. Like, this makes me feel a lot more at peace knowing that, like, I'm not the only one that's having these, like experiences and it really brings out like that connectedness yeah um in a fat in a fat in a way where like you said umbrella academy it's like whoa you're right there and like whoa like oh you were that all along me too I didn't know that and then we sort of just like help each other unlock these gifts together and yeah no, and I kind of feel like you were talking about, like, um, especially, like, around this time or, like, you know, with everything that happened within the last year, like, it's um, us, like, there's several of us who have awakened, right? And more so, there's start people now where it's, like, if they didn't feel the shift last year, they're starting to feel it, like, this year also. And they're feeling unsettled. There's like things that just aren't working out a certain way. And there's things like in us individually that are like waking up. And then there's like that stigma behind it of, you know, whether if you didn't really care about it or not, like with someone being like, well, if somebody's going to see me talking to myself or having conversations with the guide, you know, like, is that person going to find me crazy, which that's what I, I suffered with for like a very long time is like, how is somebody going to take this? And, um, oh yeah, I was like, Omar, you left, but you came back. Um, but yeah, like it, it, there's that stigma behind it. And I think it's so good to like have that platform for like coming out, I guess, kind of thing, regardless, like mm -hmm. what your ability is or what you're experiencing we need that human connection still and um being like you know hey i'm like that too or i have been seeing this you know or hearing this you know has anybody else had you know experienced the same thing and it it kind of helps with that sense of ease and comfort and you're going to start finding people like you in your umbrella academy mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. Yeah. And your soul tribe and your, your sense, your little, we all have different, I mean, I often find that like, um, my tribe has always been sort of like, I guess when I mentioned my tribe, I mean like my, 
my friendships, but like the ones that I feel like were formed perhaps in a past life because it's always there's always been that sense of familiarity of like, whoa, like I I feel like we we come from the same place. We have the same like vision or the same level of idealism or idealistic way of living. Uh, and even then I think, okay, I found this person, but somehow down the line, I, or I guess even in my life, the course of my life, they've been, they've moved. They've gone to different parts of the country or even parts of the world. And I'm like, oh wait, but like you were once here, but then you left and it's like, but also I also find that these special people in my life I, no matter where I am, I always feel connected, no matter the time difference. But it's funny that the way that this sort of matrixy, this wonderland, we're not, let's, let's use a better term than matrix. Let's replace the word matrix with wonderland. Within wonderland. this wonderland, I think that there are rules and there are some rules or things that like don't make sense. But I guess that's part of the process, which is like, okay, I met this person, but I often find that sometimes we become so attached to our people that we don't know who we are without them and it's not when something like that happens between the both of you that causes separation that really makes you like understand that perhaps these people were my friends along the journey to help me align myself better with my karmic destiny and it doesn't matter where they are because they're they're always home like sort of like that Dorothy and Oz sort of like reference, you know, like you were home all along, mm -hmm. but these people were always with you. Like they never left. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm so, so appreciative and like baffled how connected I felt with you. Cause I was like, oh, I'm just gonna have a conversation with this person. I know her through a community. I don't necessarily talk to her very like on a personal level. We're acquainted. I've seen her on lives very frequently, but I, I just thought like, okay, natal chart reading, and then I'm gonna go off my life, and we're never gonna talk again because that's what usually happens with consultations. Sometimes, yeah, you give people like an experience, and they're like, you never see them anymore. But yeah. I guess it's funny how things work out because yet yeah, now we're talking about um our phone are the series of phone call conversations that we were like this we, we're on to something these conversations we're having are actually activating things within me that i it's not that i couldn't activate them without your help but it sure is really helping me giving me that like that revving of the engine you mm -hmm. know like mm -hmm. okay she's connected to me i feel really connected to her well if she's telling me these things and I know them to be true, then I see the value in the relationship even from the beginning. And I'm like humbled because I'm like, wow, okay. Everyone that you come across will be of an importance to you. It doesn't necessarily matter where you are, but it's also, sort of like a revelation to me because like I said before I didn't think that I was going to be as connected to you as I am and feel right now and I think that even within the bigger message of Aquarius it's like no know your neighbors know your family that's like you haven't even met that's like miles away yeah because although you're not close together we're finding our tribes, we're finding our people. And also whether or not the world is like at a dramatic collapse, at least we know that I can send like messages through the ether or even as I'm collapsing and my sanity has, because I think that throughout <laughs> 2020, and I think I speak for a lot of people, yeah. what we thought was going to be the end result is not it. And we're going through a shift as it is. And it's like, okay, where do we go? How do I navigate this new world? And it's not a new world, but I guess it's always been there. It's just like, 
a volcano sort of erupting and being like, everything is coming down. And even as you had previously mentioned before, the tower moment, it's really about how you see this moment. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, Omar and I like to speak through tarot cards. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome no. to Wonderland, guys. Welcome to Wonderland, guys. Like, we get it. So if you do have friends where you're like, yeah, like, I could totally relate with this and being the hermit right now. And yeah, like, we talk like that. Okay. Um, no, I, when you were talking, I was thinking about like, because you were like, well, I'm doing a needle chart. I'm reading. There's like no expectation. But I, I recall thinking about um, when I posted for other videos on my channel, like I, I kept telling everyone I'm not very well versed in astrology. And I was thinking at some point, like, I'm like, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And, but I reached out to you because there are two things um, with our community where we, where we met. Um, Kelly had spoken so highly of you and, and it was just kind of like one of those instances where I'm just like, I really need to get my natal chart read. Like it was just that urge of like reaching out and just being like, let me get this person. So mm -hmm. that I already kind of feel like there's a guide or sky people like going, Hey, Hey. And, um, and I know like maybe for you, it's kind of like switching the two where it's kind of like, okay, I have a client. So I'm reading for them, but I was curious to know, like now, like after you've seen mine, you know what yours looks like. Do you, do you see like how a comparison where it seems like we are compatible people like talk together? Now you think about it, like with where you line up and where I line up, like that just kind of came into my head. And you're frozen. Uh, <laughs> um. Well, well, oh no. There you go. Can you're you here. You're here. I see you. Okay. Um, well, what I found, what I found was actually like, like a weird comparison, but like it all like a really cool, like, oh, her, and it's ruled by Gemini. And I'm currently going through a six house transit myself, but where Gemini is in my chart, it's in the 10th house, and that deals with work, and you have Libra up there, so we, we're both, I mean, we have similarities that we are both, like, Earth Risings, and I think it's fairly interesting how you've been through a three years, might I say even the past 10 years to this point, because I know that even being a Capricorn Rising is no easy feat, but I guess, I mean, we've been, been spoken before how we've always had like an attraction to that, like set journey and maturity. And I see how I know I'm not, I'm not claiming to know everything about astrology. I have a very big interest. And I think that it wasn't until last year where I started to get really comfortable and being very public that like, not that I was coming out of the group, like the witch's broom closet in any way, but like, People knew, but now it was getting comfortable and stepping into that role of like, okay, I read charts and this is my magic and others don't see it as magic or isn't as important, but I like to think of it as a tool that gives me, gave, gave me the gateway really into mm -hmm. this wonderland because if it wasn't for astrology, I would have never walked into any metaphysical shop or crystal store or like anything that has to do with like you know the wonderland and upon thinking about it like i suppose it was like a come to a neutrality moment where it was like i feel like this guy people are like oh you love talking about astrology so we're gonna line you up with someone that knows about different things about different as, um, aspects of life that you probably don't know either. And also, you're going to have a similarity because you're going to emotionally get each other. Your son in Gemini, Gwen is also a moon in Gemini. And I often find that when you have others that have the same sign or element, 
no need to explain. And what's also special about this friendship and this podcast is that I often find myself having to over explain myself when I'm talking about the divine or even the cosmos or even this wonderland. And with Gwen, I just, I never feel that way with you. You're just like, oh, no need to explain. I get it. I isolate too. This wonderland can get pretty wild, but, and I just feel like we've had like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what this is, but I'm like, thank you, Sky people. Thank you for throwing this in my lap. Thank you for inter like finding some way to connect me because now it's like, this wouldn't have happened if I wasn't into astrology, let alone part of the community. Yeah. No, and I I like how you mentioned like with like not coming like coming out of the broom closet kind of thing. Like if you think about it though, like with astrology, how planets align, how you look at things, um, even for like witchcraft, like I mean, hell, there's even like spells you have to do on a certain day where things line up, um, you know, as far as like the ruler of the planets. I mean, people have gotten some things down to a science. And uh, remember I was explaining to you about like the 12 uh, tasks or the 12 labors of Hercules. Not going down that rabbit hole yet, but like, again, with the, the 12 mm -hmm. hours of the Gemini, like that's kind of the same thing where it's like, why would that not be witchcraft? And uh, for me to explain it, like the 12 labors of Hercules with associated of the, the 12 hours of the genies or the genii or jinn, whatever you want to call them. Um, it's like the human going through the, the 12 signs of the zodiac. And so um, being faced with how things line up, we're going through Mercury retrograde. Sometimes people don't do spells during Mercury retrograde because of things happening or focusing on something else, um, whether it like not be like money spells or something because, you know, contracts probably shouldn't be signed at this time or whatnot, but you can always work on something else that's a labor that you could really be thriving in at that time um, for your life to feel a little more content, a little more stable. Um, and manifest what'd you say I said a little more connected yes yes a little more connected and I think it's really interesting uh because when you were asking me kind of like this this energy for the new moon coming up this week like yeah and I don't know if you felt like this too maybe we did talk about it while we were on the phone last week but like the beginning of the year Maybe like before we rung in the new calendar year, there was some hope. And then somewhere like in January, I know personally for me, like I felt, I had a lot of things going on, but I felt a little stagnant. Like it was just this ick feeling that I just wanted to just kind of bump off with a shoulder. And then something just mm -hmm. kind of clicked where it's like, okay, I do need to get outside of myself asking for the help, um, really working on me. And it seemed like things started to kind of somewhat align, but I feel like there had been some energy shifts. Like we had the full moon in Leo. Um, like there was a lot of things just going on. And I kind of feel like maybe it's not just you and I, but a lot of people feel I'm very fired up and just being like, heck yes, I'm going to own this at this time. And I'm going to be mm -hmm. manifesting a lot of things, a lot of things. <laughs> so what do you um what do you feel that this new moon represents for you or I guess even not necessarily on a personal level but like I guess what's your description or how do you feel that this moon is going to mean for the collective and for everyone uh so I it's interesting we talked about this a little bit before but um just mm -hmm. <laughs> just again because now we can actually record now <laughs> Yeah, that's right. We have technical difficulties thanks to Mercury. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> we beat you. Oh, sh I got to respect it. I'm sorry. Um, uh, um, so as a collective, um, I, it has been on my mind where it's kind of like 
no matter what it is that we are all looking for, we're all trying to heal some sort of aspect in our life, whether it's financial, um, emotional, uh, maybe some sort of physical, like anything that maybe like you can kind of see, like maybe that's like the focal point in your life. I think as a collective, kind of like how we started this conversation, we have the podcast. It's really about how people are kind of like the new currency. We can get into that in a minute. So, but you see where I'm kind of segueing into it, but like we're seeing the value of the experiences from people, whether it's like skill set or what we've learned from life, lining up at that time. And when we're starting to kind of think about these things and how to maneuver, I really think a lot of people have either been planting seeds already um, or they're going to start to. Um, and that's what they're really going to like personally for them have like as the focal point and whether it's mm -hmm. like building on those relationships with those people um, like you and I like hell wherever this goes on the podcast like at some point like let's be real like this is going to be some sort of return where we're taking an interest on each other um, on our skill set how we are how we connect it's going to be good for both of us where the universe is like hey like they see the value in each other and why not bestow some other gifts on them somehow you know um because no, I, getting, I, I totally feel that yeah because we're getting outside of selves and a lot of people know on my channel i talk about program talk and um and i was explaining this earlier but like we get outside ourselves this this isn't like some groundbreaking thing that i came up with but like in order for me to see how to get out of a certain situation that I've been in, I have to get outside of myself. And so when I get outside of myself, that's either working with people, working on a certain task or an object that maybe has nothing to do with me. But when I do, I come around full circle and it still comes back to me either way. Like it's mm -hmm. still gonna try to apply to me somehow. Um, I'm going to learn, I'm going to heal, I'm going to grow, um, I learned a new skill, a new trait, or something, I get benefited somehow, some way. There's some sort of fulfillment somewhere. So, yeah, like, I think... Um, almost altruistic. Yes, very much so. Very much so. So I, I know personally for me, like, the manifesting piece, um, and I think that's kind of like what what um you had mentioned like that's where it kind of got on that tangent and i really want you to explain that a bit more like people being like the currency like the new we were looking at money differently and i think and it should really hit that topic no and we're also aligning ourselves with like okay well it's not that we're meeting people by coincidence i feel right. like now we're seeing like the power and and community and the power and numbers and the power and like collectively looking at like i have a skill set you have a skill set we can help each other navigate this together mm -hmm. because we know that without you know going back to that um and i'm going to be making a lot of like psychedelic sort of like references because just do it omar i'm just a gemini i live off of references but i get by with a little help with my friends and if it weren't for my friends i would be miserable yeah. now i think that now we're since we're stepping into this aquarian era of we're not starting from the, the tower moment happened the foundations were shaken the way that we lived our everyday life has dramatically shifted and we have a new normal and now we're i feel like we're like okay how do we navigate this where mm -hmm. we were once so living so selfishly for ourselves thinking like well if i survive because i think we all remember the beginning of the pandemic where everyone started buying like mass toilet papers and I not know. leaving anything for anyone else and then it's it's it was really just i guess a reminder as as a collective globally like are we helping each other out 
because we yeah. can't rely on these governments that even within this pandemic that's happened has drastically changed the whole world. I felt like, for, I know that we've been through pandemics before, but not to this extent of like, a mass spiritual awakening. And it's funny because I think that like, if you weren't awakened in 2012, because I remember that Pisces and Neptune entered Pisces in 2012. And I think of Neptune being the planet of like philosophy and like spirituality and mysticism and sort of like is, you know, Alice in Wonderland, very going down there thinking like, is that, is what I'm seeing real? And now that we're, we're not done with this transit, Neptune's going to be, Pisces is going to be in Neptune for quite a while. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's comical to think how as Neptune has been in the sign of Pisces, we've all sort of had our turn with the awakening of the the thought even was I living in such a way that was completely and utterly so cognitively not distant from what is true that I think that when something so catastrophic like a global pandemic can cause like even And a, sh a, a shake up when it comes to your ego, because you start to think that like, well, if I can't attach myself to my identity that it once was before, then who am I? Yeah. And I think like when you were talking about like 2012, I was, I was thinking back to like what was going to happen. Sorry. I told you Abby was in here. She's going to start making noises, but, um, no, um, 2012, like I remember I was getting married um that was april of 2012 um a lot happened in 2012 but more so it was kind of like trying to like figure out um like what was really important and i think like for me personally then i wasn't really hitting the spiritual yet i I did go to, I did go back to church a couple times though. I will have to say that I was seeking something. I just didn't know what it was and I didn't know how to find it. So I did go back to church for some time. I was working out, but the one piece that was missing was really doing more of that shadow work, which I didn't learn until a few years later when you were talking about in my natal chart, it was like, Somewhere down the line three years ago, you just had this big awakening. I'm like, well, hell yeah, I did. I got sober. <laughs> not to say, not to say like not everyone has to be sober for a, you know, a spiritual mind and doing this work. Like, no, it just it was for me, but like that's what it took. And um, but yeah, like I uh I do find it very interesting. There was that shift, like some walls needed to be like put down um it was building some sort of new foundation like you said of this person for that time and we hit the i don't know if you've noticed this but like if you do a reading for someone the tower card is not really like the card that you really get all the time unless i i experience it as like a uh, like almost like an ego card like it's you build yourself up a little bit right but then something mm -hmm. happens the lightning strikes like right at the top of your head right and it can affect you in so many ways like whether it's the emotional um things about your yourself it could be the finances you get in that fear response kind of thing but it's very unsettling but the cool thing is is that when you've had that moment the spiritual awakening kind of thing or the shift or the leveling up like you and I talked about, it's always going to be like some sort of thing that's going to rattle you and think a certain way, but you're always going to, depending how you handle the situation, you pick yourself up and you rebuild again to put the, the roof back on, so to speak, you know, and um, mm -hmm. 
yeah, like I, yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that. I, I think to me, like when we talk about you're leveling up and it's like, yeah, I'm leveling up, but this kind of feels like very like, hmm. <laughs> no, I mean, I remember when I gave you the, the way I described, I feel like the way that I would describe a, a spiritual shift or transformate transformative experience where you're about to leave a facet of yourself behind because it's no longer resonating with where you're going. I like to think of it as like, like being in the car in traffic and getting a bowel movement and it's like, oh no. And you're going to act, you're trying to act normal and you're like, okay, this is, this isn't happening. Is this happening? It's happened. And then you have to that, you kind of collectively go through trauma because you're just like, I soiled myself today. And that panic stays with you for a long time. And you're wondering like, okay, well, shit happens. But like, does it happen to everybody every day? And yeah. it's not every day, but I think that, <laughs> uh, I think that even when speaking of these collapses, I think it's really showing us that like, listen, humble yourself also. Perhaps mm -hmm. you should take it so seriously because the thing that you're once so attached to mm -hmm. isn't going to work out for a reason. And I think like, I remember even before the pandemic happened, I applied for a job at this hotel in Los Angeles. And it was a really nice hotel. And I didn't feel like I got it. I was like, for some reason, I don't feel like I, I have this. And my friend was like, well, wh why don't you, what, what makes you think you didn't get the job? And I was like, I don't know. It's not that, I didn't like them or I didn't sell myself. I just felt like I don't, I'm not getting this for a reason. I don't know why. And I was okay with it. And then the pandemic happened and I was like, okay, well, it's a good thing. I'm not working at the hotel right now. Cause I can't imagine being in that crossfire. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, um, and that's really cool. Like, I feel like we get these little messages of like, we don't get in tune. Fear has a lot to do with it, right? Like we were thinking about it. Like we talk about the fear when like the tower thing happens and you were expressing like how you're like, I kind of feel like I didn't get it. And yeah. And I remember like the beginning of last year too, I had, so I've worked HR for three years. And I was thinking that was something that I was going to go back to. Um, and I actually put it off for some time. Like I was a little scared to like get back in the workforce of being in HR because there's time, like I get it. There's like the fairness. You have to look at the, the company's benefit. Um, but there's a lot of ugliness to it too, where it's just like, okay, but the people, you know, and um, so I had like uh, a couple interviews and some certain things happen. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm just going to stop looking. Like for some reason, pandemic was about to begin. And on top of that too, like I was telling everyone, everybody knows, like my niece is living with my husband and I, we don't have any kids. And Unfortunately, like the way things happened in this pandemic, a lot of things came to surface, especially in the home front. So there's a lot of things going on. Um, we're watching her um, and taking care of her, but like I wouldn't be able to put in that attention, um, the nurturing that she needed um, if I was working, you know? And yeah. like, I'm telling you, like people get so stuck in that fear of, well, I've got to pay bills, you know, like, how am I going to support my family? Like, you know, all these certain things. And it's like, if you really free yourself from that fear and let universe take over and say, hey, sky people, universe, whoever it is that you like turn to, like, not to get like on this very like spiritual like plane, but like really thinking about it, like in this physical realm, like how like there's this um tether like attachment of some sort like they're gonna provide for you and um 
And whether you believe in like the law of attraction, it's the same thing. If you keep thinking you're going to keep getting crap and you're going to get crap, if you are inviting good things in, more good things are going to come in um, mm -hmm. and aligning that energy. So I do find that very, very interesting how like the same with you and with me, we were like, we're looking for jobs. And it's like, well, we didn't get this exactly. <laughs> and no. And we, you know, I, I, I'm currently working at Starbucks and I wasn't working for at least like seven months out of the year. I had the opportunity to go back to work and I was like, I'm not, I don't want to go back. I, even if they give me an extra amount of pay and it actually gave me an opportunity to reconnect to myself and think like, okay, well, you have no responsibilities, immediate responsibilities. Your responsibilities are to take care of yourself mm -hmm. and take care of your family. Because I remember when it first hit, like, I had a hard time understanding what I was going to do like the next week or even like the next month. Because when you're in the, in the middle of it all, you're just like, I just need to focus on like survival. And even just having that sense of like focus on survival, it can sort of like make you so tense to the point where it you don't your judgment take a breath. A and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And not only that, but then you start like solely like thinking like, okay, I have to conserve this because I then I don't trust that I will have enough for um, for the future. And I remember it came a point where I was like. It's funny how everything started because I remember for the holidays, I received in 2019 for Christmas, I got three decks of tarot cards and I was like, funny how I would get three decks out of nowhere. And I thought, okay, I don't tell very many people that I read cards, but I guess I'm listening to, I'm like, great, I get to add to my collection. Cool. I then found out I guess throughout the year that I, I was supposed to use those cards to find a supplemental way income because I wasn't to send any checks out or what have you and I started realizing okay I, re I resisted it because it was sort of like a, a moment where it was like I was in Hogwarts and it's like, here's the, here's the one that you're going to use. And I'm just yeah. like, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm not going that direction because I was also looking for work in a different kind of way. And I was looking for work and it was just never like, I would forge this path and it would never really go through. And I'm like, why isn't it working but it seems like magic is working for me and i'm really intuitive because people the reception that i would that i got when i mean it even like made me feel important when i'm like oh wow i'm talking and they're writing things down that i'm saying and I thought, I thought like even pre-pandemic or even as I was going through it, that like the things that I would sort of, or be, perhaps because the people around me were like, oh, cool, anyways. And it felt nice to even be given the opportunity to be like, wow, no, you are important. People are listening to what you're saying. And perhaps you've been in the Wonderland place for this whole time and you're not sounding like these are, these things are illusions. These things are real. And now it just seems so full circle where I'm like, okay, all right. I'm listening to really tapping it. And when I meet someone that resonates on a soul level, like, how I feel with you, I can't ignore it. It's yeah. like, hello, <laughs> hello, hey, this person's really special. This person's really special, and maybe you should do this reading. And I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Let's do experiences. And I think even meeting you was an experience for me because I was like, oh, 
you're not you're not you're not looking intently to the magic that's already around you because I was acquainted with you mm -hmm. but I guess it was a reminder like hey you're not looking at the neighbors you're not looking at your community you're not looking at the magical people that are going to help you and now it's like oh I see this because I had my ego humiliated and not only humiliated but almost humbled to a place where I sort of had to accept that perhaps the illusions aren't illusions and I ignored the notifications on my phone so to speak and I was like no it's not it's not time or like that's not real or like okay and now I'm like no I'm paying attention in my body I'm almost not even resistant and I think that like before if we if this pandemic didn't happen I wouldn't have paid attention because I would have had all these distractions and I think that like in this moment that we've had collectively of like realizing okay well we can't do the things that we want to do so what do we do and then some of us go collectively a little insane and some of us sort of are on track and like really see where they need to be aligned in and I think that I don't know when it happened for you but I know that like for me this year I saw people come into my job and I was like wow they look different and like amazing how a year could could do to a person really transform themselves and then I started thinking about myself and how much I was collectively growing internally but I didn't see anything externally I thought me this year might be that year that I might see things actually happen in the 3D rather than happen internally because I think that I was I think that we've both been sort of aware of these shifts but we didn't quite know what to make of it just yet now um you were talking about like the tarot cards and like I had been reading them for like a few probably like six months before um before the new year like in 2020 mm -hmm. and I didn't think like this was how I was going to get some source of income um it never crossed my mind to do a YouTube channel like it just came one day um oh, there's so many things even like doing jewelry that kind of thing um, but again, that's been guidance from, you know, from what I have with George. Um, but yeah, I've noticed like a lot of people, even now, like I was discussing like friends, um, we were talking about like, um, oh, <laughs> this wasn't on the podcast, but this was like, we were hoping for your recording, but, um, having like the friends uh, Omar had made a comment about like, you know, like renewing the subscription, I thought was like very hilarious. Um, but I had a friend of mine <laughs> like saying, you know, the new year started and she's trying to be around like-minded people. And so at least meeting them like once a month and kind of like talking about what's going on with you because she does work in uh, like in a corporate industry right now. Things are very much changing here in Texas for the most part like it's oil and gas and so she's knowing that layoffs are coming and she's just like well you know I kind of have to have like some sort of backup but a lot of people are getting very creative about like I need to figure out something that I do know that's going to be like a backup plan whether if I want to go back into corporate America or not but doing something that I really thoroughly enjoy and seeing how I can benefit from it. But I think what lacks is like, instead of just doing and maybe losing the interest or the passion and thinking it's about the money, because that's really not what it's about. Like even with the jewelry that I make, there's a purpose to it. There's a connection with it. And that's to help someone else who might be like called by a specific god goddess or whoever um when i make it it helps connect with them it's still like that reciprocation of 
you know, I made this out of love and a channeling and, and the benefit of giving a respect to a certain entity in order to help someone else build a connection. So it's not really about the money at that point. Um, the same thing goes with the readings like that you and I do, whether it's a natal chart or a tarot reading, we're all trying to like heal at some point and hear a specific answer to heal. Um, and again, that's kind of like my point. It's like, as soon as you get outside of yourself, either way, you're, it's like the divine, your higher, your highest self takes over and you're helping others or being a service. And it still comes back to you somehow, whether if it is a monetary gain, but you've learned something in the process, you're growing together in the process, you know, mm -hmm. like those little experiences. Mm -hmm. So I have noticed people kind of shifting into that, that gear, but I have noticed like, all right, guys, I see your attention. I see where you're going with this, but is it like benefiting for a collective, you know? And I think... Mm -hmm if it doesn't really have like that spark or that passion or that service to it, it's like, I don't think it'll last in the long run, if that makes sense. No, it does. Um, the way that it makes sense to me was that I remember having experiences like, okay, I think the thing that sparked the whole, I guess I'm doing readings now was when it's funny you know how we're talking about synchronicities and how we not necessarily disregard people in the way that we never think we might come across them again. I was working at this restaurant two years ago. I left, I was there for like at least a year. And while I was working there, there was this person that I had added on Instagram. And I'm no stranger to adding strangers on to social media or even having a sense of connectedness when I feel like, yeah, no, let's stay connected. Um, I hadn't spoken to this person. I had only served her table once at this restaurant. And we, she posted something on her story, just like three cards. And I responded and I was like, wow, that's, that's quite the reading. And she asked me, do you read? And I was like, this is the moment where I say, like, do I claim to be this person? And I'm like, yeah, I guess I do read. Yeah, I do. I've been I've been doing it for my friends, and I've been doing this for so long that, yeah, uh, I could read for you. And then she, she paid me, and then it became a lot more like, okay, this is registering. And then she had like referred me to read for her friends, and then I then saw that, okay, I'm I'm connected to people that I wouldn't necessarily connect with if I wasn't um home if I wasn't able to travel so I thought it was interesting and then even then like I had moments where I was reading for families and I was being thrown like bones might like so many bones to just keep on doing that thing and I was like I'm making people cry and I'm making them realize where they are at vibrationally and it felt really altruistic and really felt centered in a place of like, listen, you can go to so several readers out there, but for some reason, my words are connecting with you. And then even with these clients, they would just send me money through Venmo because they were thinking of me. And I was like, you don't, and you don't want to tell that person or that client that like, I want to like read for you or like, can I do something to receive this? But it was just really like, I survived my year purely based on the kindness of other people by just showing up I guess even as my highest self and that was truly rewarding for me and it was like okay I guess there's something to this I'm helping other people with some form of divination and also realizing your own magic and you're like okay well this sense of refinement wouldn't have come if something catastrophic would have happened and I think that like ultimately entering this wonderland now it's it's gotten kind of spicier it's like okay we have different rules okay we are finding our way out but in such an unconventional way that we wouldn't have thought of before no I agree and 
Um, I did want to talk about that comment um, that you and I talked about. Was it last week? Yeah. Um, how you're you're predicting? Was it this year or next year? Like a lot of of um, people that are like in our community, whether they're witch, medium, or however they want to identify. Like, it's going to be the time where we're going to, like, learn the truth about people, like, of who they are. Um, and I'm kind of glad I had, like, through this past year, because I'm going to say, like, I had to, I, <laughs> in my chart, you're like, you had some petty moments. And I'm like, yes, I do. <laughs> like, <laughs> it not happen all the time, but, like, I'm really glad some, there was that one specific um and I was telling you about the friend and um, she had pointed something out to me. I, I needed that talk. Um, and also I had someone else come in and say, Jen, like you have to, Jen or Gwen, whatever you want to call me, but like you have to understand that there's plenty for everyone. Like it doesn't matter. Like there's plenty, there's, there's, there's an abundance for everyone. It's not like this competition with like other people. Like I'm just competing with myself at this point. And again, it's kind of like, okay, so I register that. I had my moment. It was a very humbling experience. And then it made me think like, okay, do I want to do this? Do I, um, is this really like me benefiting for myself or am I really here to like heal with other people, like being a service? Mm -hmm. Like it was almost like kicking that part out and it's like, no, you can't like come back in tune, be aligned, get higher self to come in for you and help. So, um, so yeah, even if I have a day where I don't make any money, I'm like, you know what? I still got something out of it. Like, you know, whether it's talking to people, connections or whatever, you know, and the mindset is, is that there is still an abundance, whether if I didn't get money today or whatever, I know it's still coming and it will come. Um, but even then, the spiritual I grow, the growth that I get exponentially on having people heal, I find it better for me. Um, we've talked about like life purpose. Like, we're all sitting here like, what is my purpose? Why am I here? You know, and I kind of feel like these end up being like the touchstones of um, when we do that, we're just like, wow, I can kind of breathe. And this answered like one of like the big questions that I have. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Like, as this human being on this earth, what am I supposed to do? And um and I can relax a little bit, you know, it's just, just show up. And just like the people that showed up for you, like, you know, they get the message. Like I'm thinking of Omar, I'm going to send a love offering because they want to, like, because <laughs> they have the abundance, they want to share it and, um, help you get by. And yeah, like, I, know, I, and, and, you know, I too. think that as earth rises, I think that you can also like, um, uh, sort of agree that as earth risings, it's very hard for us to ask for help because I think that we, we don't necessarily think that we want to place that like burden on other people to help us, but it's like, if I, I can figure this out myself, I will, but there's the level of degree of like, well, when do you ask for help? And are you actively asking for help when you need it? Or are you asking for help because you remotely humble yourself to get to that place to be like, listen, I'm not okay. And like, thank you for, if you could lend me like a hundred dollars, that'd be great. Because at the same time, I know that we've all been through like a moment where it was like, oh, I don't want to borrow money from you. Like, I love you. I don't want to borrow money from you, but I have to because I need to, survive and I think it taught me not only to not be so prideful when I need to ask for help because I know that I'm not the only one that has a lack of resources but I've realized that the friends that have had more than enough were always so giving and like no like you 
I know that like by helping you do this, it's not that like you should feel bad. It's just that like at least you have that the friends that can support you that way when you need it. Because imagine the folks that don't have that. And it taught me a lot more about myself of like, wow, I think you're really being egoic here and being too prideful to ask for help when you really need it. And I, why is that? Mm -hmm. And I've opened myself up to community, even to people that I never thought I would. I mean, I suppose it's a lot easier to connect with strangers than it would be to tell your friends sometimes because you want to appear like you have your your stuff together to your friends, not be out of pride or even out of like competition. But I have felt like the strangers that were along the way showed me that like there's nothing to be prideful about. None of us are okay. And it's okay to even seek a different answer to the bigger question of your purpose because everyone's shifting. Everyone's shifting. And again, it's it's the shattering of the ego, which was the tower mm -hmm. moment again of of um things that we either learn from when we were little to where we hold on to them now um which i mean i think this was like <laughs> this was like a two tower moment like with last year like it was two towers but um not here goes my mind not 9 11 folks like not that at all <laughs> like not <laughs> But it's not funny. It's really not funny. But uh, I mean, like, it's just <laughs> one of those things, like, you're right, like the, the ego moments of when things happen, they rattle you. And then the things that we're taught of, like, don't appear weak. You know, you are hardworking. If you want to go out, you go get it. Like, you have to work twice as hard. Um, which I mean, I'm earth sign Capricorn, like I'm very hardworking, you know, I don't have a problem with that, but like the more I've noticed that I keep doing the hard work or not asking for the help, you know, I get really tired, you know, and like, there's something else that kind of like falls off in the balance where it's like, I just want to fall into fetal position in a corner and like cry, you know, like, because I just, mm -hmm. I feel so weak and, um, kind of like when I got sober, it, you know, it's, it's in, I guess, kind of like ingrained there. Like the only way that it kind of work, like the way that it does work, not kind of works is that when you've noticed like your life and you hit some sort of bottom and you're asking for help because this is something you haven't tried before like that's what's going to kind of help you open your mind up to that willingness on trying something new or something different and being like I never thought about it that way and again going into asking other people like well how did you do it and you know like this is what I did okay so in that moment you're checking outside of yourself you're asking the other person like what their experience was and what they lived through and and what they actually do and um like it still comes back to where you apply it to yourself and i i find that very beautiful on a lot of things on standpoint in life and and it, it's it's kind of like i kind of wished we didn't learn those things like when we were little about like you know, you have to be tough. And at the end of it, like you come into the world alone, you die alone. And it's like, I don't like, I don't think that anymore. You know, I, I really, really don't, um, you know, however you look at it. I, because I in a way it's a sort of like subconscious programming where you tell yourself in order to achieve the thing that I want, there has to be a level of, or a degree of suffering in order for me to feel satisfied or even like a sense of like I earned it and I think that even like throughout the year all of us could have like sort of awakened to the idea that like have we been like just working all this time and not paying attention to like the essential of what is life which is not necessarily survival but to live a 
better quality of life. And I think that we've all looked at our, the things that we have been doing and thinking like these formulas haven't been working. And if you're, if we're going to convince ourselves that it was, Mm -hmm. then we have to make a change somehow because like, this isn't it. And I think now I, I really, I mean, even like I spoke to you over the phone just the other day that I do see a resurgence of like healing. And I do see that we're going to go through a period of artistic expression because it has to come out like and and I think that in this form of healing and the way that we're collectively healing together healing our communities we are setting forth the precedent of what we want to set as a standard Mm -hmm. and not only as young people but even moving forward that like okay, I guess we're not listening to what our bodies are telling us. I guess we are exhausted. I guess we are emotionally zapped and thinking that like, you know, like, you know, I mean, even thinking about like it, like in the form of a child, like when I was younger, you think like, oh, you see that uncle or that like sort of like parental figure that would drink and you felt like, I wonder why they drank. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, because they were sad. But before it wasn't taken so seriously. It was just like, oh, they're just handling it. But I guess now we're better equipped with like better tools to understand ourselves so we can heal moving forward and not get so trapped into that like paradigm of what Capricorn represents, which was the the decline and fall of these capitalistic structures that we sort of like formed our lives around where we're realizing that like perhaps we need to like laugh perhaps we need to get in contact with something so not so tangible mm-hmm. that gives us that fuel to keep going you know because I think even as like Pluto has made its transit through Capricorn we're starting to see like okay through the decay of 2020 I guess we're choosing life I guess mm-hmm. we're choosing to not wallow there because it's not great. And yeah. I think that like, although it isn't like the happy ending we're, we're looking for, perhaps it's something that we needed to see so we can awaken and better animate ourselves to choose life, choose a, not a utopia, but like, again, choice. Mm-hmm. You can fall back to the old way of our pattern of learning or even like we can even take this on like a uh, millennial sort of way of thinking. Like our parents are even having a hard time with technology. And even as an aging millennial myself, I'm looking at these Zoomers like these TikTok kids, they're way advanced than I am and I'm not adjusting. Yeah, I agree. Like I tried TikTok like <laughs> last week um, doing a video and all this other stuff. And I was just like, I feel a little old for this. Like, <laughs> no, very bad. Yeah. And now I think like I I don't understand this, but I know that like it's our phones and technology and ordering things on your phone so instantaneously yeah. that it gets so, that we're also creating another sort of microcosmic world that's separated from the three D. And it's like, how do you even balance those two worlds to begin with? Even yeah. the Wonderland, you know, because there's a Wonderland in everything, and you're like, okay, so if I'm not connected to the internet, then like, who am I? And if I'm connected to the internet, am I being influenced or am I being inspired to be someone that's myself or someone that is the that I see myself in? And now we're seeing a decline of influencers and we're starting to look at not our celebrities that we once thought were like we we can learn from them and realizing that they're just people and they have money and in reality the answers were within our neighbors within the people that we weren't talking to because that's where the i guess the meat and coming potatoes. Together really comes. yeah 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 no i i find that like Yeah, we don't even have, like, I mean, I had, um, like, I guess they'd be, like, role models or something. Like, we think of, like, either maybe, like, parents or, like, a teacher or, 
something like that. And like with, with my niece being here in the house, like, oh my goodness. Like, I, I don't know. I haven't really heard my niece talking about like who she looks. I mean, she says she looks up to me. I don't know if like that would be like a role model, but I'm just like, that feels really nice. And um, not that I'm really anybody on the internet yet, like, you know, <laughs> but mm-hmm. like, you know, she sees me like trying and learning and doing these things. And she's got like the interest in wanting to read tarot cards. Actually, Omar, you'd be very pleased to know she's trying to want to learn. She loves astrology and she really, she's like, I really want to know how to read my birth chart. I'm like, okay. (laughs) Yeah. So we got another one. So I would invite you to like say, because I know you had said this, like, you're not like, I don't know if I would consider myself like a healer. Like, I think you are only because. You might not have everyone coming in for like the same thing, but I can say like from my own personal experience, like I wanted to learn to understand myself better, not just like, hey, let me, because I mean, we can even look at doing tarot card readings. Um, You you were like, you know, it's kind of cool, like how to read it when you start to learn how to do it. And tarot cards the same way, but again, like how I look at it, I don't see it as just something like, I just learned, like, no, like there's, there's a lot more to it than that. Like people heal with those things. They learn to understand and identify things with themselves a bit better um, in order to learn how to navigate um, in certain things in their lives, you know? Um, Hell, I mean, I told you, like, this is what's helping me kind of take a break and just being like, I'm still going to work, but I'm not going to kind of stick to like the schedule of things, but just kind of like sit, reflect and kind of just do, but not, like not stress, um, which I find very interesting. And I wanted to tell you, I pulled a tarot card for myself yesterday, which I haven't done in some time. Um, it was the queen of pentacles. She was sitting. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. but it's, Work. she's but she's she's sitting she's not really kind of going into an action like I am like I am too but it's like I know what I need to do but I'm sitting and working on the project you know what I mean I'm planting the seeds that need to be done um where I know that the fruits will come later um mm-hmm. and so but even then there's fruits right now. It's the fruits of this relationship. And like just little, it's just little things. It's little, it's little things, little things. And it, all, and it also comes back to your level, your degree or level of like sense of gratitude because I mean, you know that as earth sign risings and all having like heavy emphasis on earth placements, I think we both sort of appreciate the little mundane details of life because when you start like to deviate from noticing like you even mentioned like just the other day how you went on a walk and you saw that one singular flower and how that excited you to an extent where you're like wow like there's there's beauty really all around us but it really takes like I guess a sense of like seeing everything collectively ugly to make you shift your eyes to a place that's like wow okay well I identify beauty and I'm gonna go in that direction instead of having to go into the direction of like seeing everything as completely decaying but okay rabbit hole mm-hmm. <laughs> welcome back to the oh, no. welcome back to a random spot in the conversation we lost our place but this is what the podcast is really just about we have no idea where we're going, but we're pretty sure we're pretty confident that we really don't care where we're going. We're just having a fun time. Am I just the only one because I have witch in my name and they're like, you want to be a part of the Illuminati? Like, <laughs> I mean, perhaps. I mean, I don't know. 
And of course, like as soon as I say Illuminati and you start talking, like. Uh, from a person on Instagram saying, hello there, fellow light worker. Yes. I heard a little girl. You heard a little girl? On. Hello? Is this episode over? No. Till next time. <laughs> no!